You just haters. Haters going to hate, 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 hate. Gary was hate. seeing his pictures of a skinny ass white girl. <laughs> uh, t- she's not skinny. Singing Taylor Swift. She's not skinny. I'm just big as hell. I've been making people look skinny in photos since 93. <laughs> uh huh. So if you didn't see that, go check out Tony's Instagram because you need to see that picture. <laughs> and now, oh, and by the way, yes, that's Dusty Rose for people that didn't know. <laughs> I had somebody tell me, "Oh, that sounds like Flavor Flav." Dusty Rose and Flavor mm-hmm. Flav sound nothing alike. Hey, hey, you talking whatever. Dusty Rose, I the mean, wrestler? I mean, I'm not. I'm well, not what other Dusty sure. Rose do you know, <laughs> sir? Saying, man, jeez, <laughs> who the heck does think Rose is okay. alike? Okay, let's start this thing. Oh, sure, why not? It's only a minute in. Yeah. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, Episode 519. This show is brought to you by VZ Grips, Walker Defense, Primary Arms, and XS Sights. In this show, I bring you the wrath. Why? Because I can. And we'll be discussing a training system, a flat buffer tube, some deltons, and pyrite. As you may know, we showcase guns, gear, lots of knives, and anything else you might be interested in. We do our best to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm Chad Wallace, and with me tonight, we have Tony from New Jersey, Rob from Florida as our Florida man, and of course, Rusty from somewhere in Tennessee. We're not exactly sure where. And I don't think anybody else does either. So, Primary oh, Arms <laughs> seeks to provide you the best shopping experience for everything firearms. They have over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, including a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Don't forget to also check out Primary Arms' line of optics. Now, our primary arms product of the week this week is the Radical Firearms AR-15 16-inch 5.56 rifle. You'll find out later why I put that as the primary arms product of the week. Now, you can find everything you need by heading over to primaryarms.com. And we have teamed up with Primary Arms to give away a GLX RS-15 Red Dot. That is their brand new ACSS Vulcan Radical uh, Delta Point Pro one that Primary Arms is offering. So you can head over to firearmsinsider.tv slash giveaway to sign up and enter. Also, if you go to the website, firearmsinsider.tv, at the drop down menu or the top, depending on, on your phone or not, if you just go to giveaway, it'll take you there also. Now we're into what we did in firearms. So let's see, we'll let Rob go first. Yeah, it poured like crazy, and I'm just getting out of the busy season at work, so Saturday sucked, and Sunday was under the weather, so I didn't do nothing. Sounds fair. Oh, let's see. Let's let's go with Tony next. This is what I went to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got the rest of the dates for the other two ranges, Union Hill Gun Club and Recoil, and I took the, Matter, uh, the Matador X from Tandem Cross with me, because I planned on putting some rounds down range. Uh, I got the recoil, and it they had so many people in their place, it looked like they were giving money away. Like, every not only was every lane taken, they had classroom full, and the lobby was people just waiting around to shoot. So I was like, all right, well, I'll go to Union Hill Gun Club and uh, set up the rest of the dates for the year there. I walk in the door, every parking spot was full and they were parked on the grass. So I have no idea what was going on here in Jersey, but I couldn't get into a range to actually pull triggers. But luckily I was able to get into the ranges and set up dates for diversity shoots. So I did nothing uh, except stare at this um, lower receiver and realize I have to find my Strike Industries lower parts kit that I put somewhere. I'm like, oh, yeah, I need well, that. Well, Tony, if you don't find it, I can probably round up some parts. For lower parts kit? 
Yeah, at least I know I have a trigger. I know there's some various miscellaneous parts. I'm sure I got an A2 grip I can send you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the A2 grip. I'm sorry. I'm not asking you. you know, I'm not sorry. I don't hate A2 grips, but they're so much better if you just take the finger groove off and make them. They're just great then. But yeah, I get you. So yeah, just let me know because especially after what's coming up with Zoe, I may have a few extra parts also. Rusty, what'd you do? Rode a motorcycle? I rode a motorcycle from South Florida to Tennessee and made a little zigzag across the state. And, yeah, and I forgot when I got down to Florida that I have to conceal carry my handgun down there. You just don't get out of the car and walk around like you did in Tennessee with it. So that was an adventure to start off with. So, but yeah. <laughs> Well, well, too bad. You have a uh, Tennessee concealed carry permit. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, I just uh, I had it on my side. You know, it was half time around here. You know, where I'm at, I just, I just don't, I just throw my shirt over top of it, and I realized I said I got an inside the pants holster in the car, so uh, I went and got it and tucked it down in there. Then, yeah, did that the rest of the way back. So, but yeah, I had a good trip. I rode in the rain for for probably about 500 miles Ugh. coming back. Yeah. But it was, it was all good. It, cl- it cleared up once I got up about out of Florida. So yeah, of course, of course. You know, the rest of the trip was Florida good. welcomes you. Florida <laughs> welcome you by trying to drown you. Yeah. But by the time, by the time I hit Savannah, uh, right up close to Savannah, Jacksonville, it, it, it cleared up and you can put the throttle down on it and let it roll, let it roll a little bit. Well, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, you did, accessorize your 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 helmet i did i did i took some stickers i had from um from uh patriot patch co and some ones i had from shot show and put on there and I actually made a little, a little funny post about it on instagram yeah. and i saw it. i figured <laughs> yeah i figured i might as well just get some put these stickers a good use to so stick them on there might as well might as well yeah i i amazingly enough got to the range again now, of course, because I went there, I shot a bunch of ammo from Target Barn that they had, that they've graciously donated for the Foxtrot Mic Review and the RM1C from Ross Martin. So I've been shooting those. The Foxtrot Mic ran fantastic with the new new spring in it. <laughs> so, you know, no problems there. That 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 was good. That was good. So... Also, the Black Talon Tactical Trigger that I got ran fantastic. So I had a good range trip. That was nice. Uh, the RM1C is now has 725 rounds through it. So, you know, it's getting closer, getting closer. But, you know, it's had zero problems so far with their magazines. Uh, basically, all the different ammo types I've sent through it. Uh I am now the 5.56 ammo that Target Barn sent for the Foxtrot mic review. I did finish it off. <laughs> so I, they sent like hey, 200 rounds. So it's a hey, hey, Target there. Barn. I could use a few for this <laughs> class I'm going to uh, next week. So exactly. But so I did, <laughs> I did make it to the range, but the build that we're Zoe and I are doing that people are donating parts for, for it's basically, we're going to write an article on, you know, women you know choosing why they would choose this stuff and what kind of parts are in it stuff like that so arm spec sent a lower parts kit minus a trigger group because i'm going to just put a trigger in here but they also sent one of their captured buffer systems here uh i have one and i was like these things are they're nice i mean they really are they keep it quiet or uh they function well so we did that they sent that then Faxon, because of course, you know, you got to get the fancy pretty barrel, <laughs> but they, they, they sent this, that was, and the one that was, you know, it's purple and green and blue and, but the ones they had coded this way this time on their website were their match series. So this is a 223 wild one and eight twist five R rifle stainless barrel. Uh, so you can kind of see it if you're watching, but you know, it'll look good. Timber Creek sending 
one of their parts kits. It's not here yet. Uh, and then Foxtrot Mike sent just a standard AR lower. It is at the dealer as we speak. Uh, but so we got to go pick that up. Uh, and then she can start putting some parts together and build the thing out. Still needs an optic. So I think, think she wants to go with a red dot because we don't want to weigh it down with like a one to six, one to eight. And she's not going to shoot past 100 yards anyway. So no reason to put something you don't need on it. Plus her eyes are a little better than ours because she's not old. I don't get it. <laughs> so that's that's what's going on here. That's what I did. Now we can take you to ba Bandwidth Sponsor, friends over at Patriot Patch Co. Because you love them. Patch of the Month Club, you need to join. I didn't look to see what the new one is for April, but I don't even know if they have it up yet. They might. I don't know. I didn't look. Uh, don't forget to check out merch tab on the firearmsinsider.tv. You can get some shirts over there. So if you want to support, you know, well, or sport the Gun and Gear Review podcast, you can get those shirts over there. Don't forget to check out affiliates discounts. Uh, they aren't in the YouTube video this week because I was having trouble. and But you can check them out in the show notes, on the website. You can find them anywhere. And... Now, Rob can tell us what we're doing next. Well, the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. And our main topic tonight is going to be sponsored by XS Sites. For over 25 years, XS Sites has helped you get on target faster, offering tritium sights in all different types and styles. Low light is no longer an obstacle. Most options come in with a brightly colored photoluminescent ring. This colored ring makes them work great in daylight by drawing your eye right to the front sight. XS Sights have styles for everyone. Big dots, ghost rings, standard notch and post, minimalist, suppressor height, all offering tritium options. Available for a plethora of firearm types. From shotguns to handguns, excess sights has you covered for all your low sight shooting needs. Excess sight product of the week is the Rossi Optic Mounts. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they now, this is new for them. I mean, they've made lever gun optic mounts. This just happens. They now offer them for Rossi's. They have one for the 3030 and also the 9294s, I think. Uh, so they're out there. Uh, they're new. They came out with a bunch of other stuff. I think they can't just drop the 1911 sites today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're making nice. tritium 1911 sites for a few different brands, Colt, Springfield, somebody else too, that I can't think of. Well, we so, know how I feel about, you know, how I feel about doing uh actual modernizing the sites on a lever. Cause I cannot really figure out buckhorns <laughs> are really intuitive for me. I can't do it. Um, I can concentrate really hard, but it's like at 25 yards, I shoot a tighter group with my 357 Magnum handgun than I do with my lever action. And that should not be the case at all. And that's the thing is, is in, like with these, some of them you can get their peep sights with some you are updated irons, but if nothing else, it's an optics mount. Just get a red dot from various companies. I mean, you know, you could get one from primary arms. You could get one from Gideon optics, you know, and, and truthfully swamp Fox or get, get over yeah. this whole, oh, it's not traditional thing. You want to shoot the thing. Well, you want to shoot it fast. There's nothing with putting modern optics on a classic gun. If you want to be better with it, if you just want to have fun and, Pretend you're a cowboy and just shoot leather leather axes with, with buckhorns. Go ahead, but if you want faster target acquisition, put a red dot on the dang thing. Yeah, no kidding. Especially because you don't have to do weird stuff like we used to. You'd have to drill it and tap it and all kinds of stuff. Now you can pick this up, and this is with what the whole go ghost. You they have both versions. You can get just the rail, or you can get the rail with ghost rings. Right. Yeah, I was just looking at it. I clicked on it because you can get just a rail for $76, $77. Yeah, they're not expensive. 
Yeah. So don't you can use code GGR20 and get 20% off almost anything over there at excesssites.com. I do know since this comes out Friday, they're having an Easter sale. I don't know exactly what it entails. I'll probably post something on Instagram and X on it. But you don't know what Easter entails or the sales entails? The sales. Okay, because um, <laughs> I was about to have to explain how the Easter Bunny came along. And uh... <laughs> and then I'd have to tell you the story about me hitting the Easter Bunny on the night before Easter. And, well, it didn't survive, so. <laughs> so. But three days later. No, go, go exactly, ahead. exactly. I, I, don't want, I don't want to tell non-hunting stories like We Like Shooting does and bore you guys. Oh, my God. I know. So we're into the main topic. That's me. That's the Cobra Tech Wrath review. And I have it here if you want to see it, you know, if you're watching. So flipper knife, so we'll get into it. It'll be easier than than you think. So, of course, last week I did their out the front knife. This week I'm doing the wrath. So when it comes to pocket knives, us, we, I usually try to recommend ones that won't kill the wallet. Uh, that's kind of our thing around here, I think, sometimes. Cobra Tech Knife happens to be one of those companies. Yes, they make higher priced items also, but they have plenty in the under $100 range. The Wrath is one of those knives. Now, the Cobra Tech Wrath, it's a nice everyday folder. Uses a flipper on top of the handle to open up the knife. Liner lock to hold the blade in place. Nothing fancy for the Wrath, as this style of EDC knives have been around for ages, and the Wrath is a simple knife that works well. Specifications on the Wrath are kind of what make it shine in the, its price range. Starts with coated D2 steel blade. So if you happen to listen to us, you know that we like D2 steel as a great inexpensive knife blade material. Holds an edge decent enough. It's easier to sharpen. Uh, I haven't needed to sharpen the Wrath. Granted, I didn't abuse it like I did the Black Mamba that Cobra Tech sent. So there is that. But it's D2, so I've had enough D2 knives to know what they're like. Coating on the blade also helps protect it from the elements. A nice touch, since D2 is not real, is not a stainless steel per se. Now, the blade thickness is 0.12 inches, and Cobra Tech hardens it to a pretty good range of 55 to 62 Rockwell Segi scale. Uh, it's pretty standard for D2, as most of us know here. Now, Cobra Tech did choose G10 for the RAS handles. Uh, of course, G10 is a composite material that gives the handle good strength. It's also impervious to a bunch of chemicals, oils, stuff like that. Now, in my opinion, the G10 handles will probably outlast the RAS blade just because it's not going to rust. Uh, another advantage with the G10 is its texture. Even when not texturized, it still gives you a good grip exactly what you need in one in a knife handle the wrath does have smooth handles but they allowed me to get a good grip on the wrath partly because of the g10 material and when you machine it it's still not perfectly smooth i guess you could get it there but it's not now like mentioned the wrath uses a flipper style opening i do like flipper opening knives the wrath flipper works extremely well blade just flips right out now one of my complaints with the wrath is that is the only way to open it is the flipper. No other way. You know, I'd like a little slot or something in the blade, so there's at least another way you could open it. However, it doesn't keep me from liking the smooth operation of the Wrath's flipper. The Wrath also uses a liner lock to keep the blade out once it's been opened. The liner lock also performed as expected. Uh... To close the knife, of course, you just push the liner lock sideways, unlock the blade, and then pivot the blade in. Pretty simple, pretty normal. So, now that I've gone over the general stuff, we'll get into the numbers for you guys. Uh, Wrath uses a three and a half inch long drop point blade. If you've listened to me before, you know I really like EDC blades, blades in the three to three and a half inch length. So, the Wrath checks that box for me, of course. I'm also a fan of a good drop point blade. Uh, the RAS blade shape is very useful. It reminds me of some other blades that I've had that I thought were useful with the same style of drop point blade. 
Now the blade hides in a four and a half inch long handle that of course also carries the deep pocket clip and lanyard hole. I don't use lanyards, but the hole slash slot is there if you do. Uh, I do like the deep pocket carry clip. Puts the knife pretty far down in your pockets. When the knife's open, of course, it's eight inches long. Imagine that. You got a three and a half inch blade and a four and a half inch handle. Hmm. Let's see. My math makes that eight inches. Who knows? For a knife this size, the rasp is fairly lightweight, tipping the scales at four ounces. I was pretty happy with the lightness of the rasp. It is easy to carry because of the weight. Now, I've used the rasp for a bit. It's treated me well. Drop point blade cuts nicely for me. It's cut a lot of boxes, a few steaks, some other stuff. All the time doing what a knife should do, and that's cut. One aspect I really liked about the wrath is it's jimping on the top of the blade. There's not a lot of it, but it is cut deep enough that you can get a good non-slip grip with your thumb on it. Something that not all knives, some seem to be just for show. This one actually does something. The handle shape was very comfortable in my hand. It is pretty slim, which I like. Some people might want a bigger handle to get a better grip on it. To me, it didn't seem to matter. And the Wrath, of course, is a good looking knife. And this one, especially since it has this red accent around the pivot. I think the Cobra Tech Wrath's a good EDC knife. Uses good coated blade, nice G10 handle. Uses tried and true flipper opening and liner lock. Looks good. And you get it all for under 60 bucks. You know, what really more could you ask for in a simple EDC knife? So you can head over to Cobra Tech and check out the Wrath if you'd like. Uh, if nothing else, check out the other great knives they have over there. Now, the Firearm Insider Review key points. Claim to fame. Quality everyday carry flipper knife. Target market. EDCers who want a decent, well-priced pocket knife, of course. Features and benefits, I think we've gone over almost all of those, but they're there if you want to look at them. Uh, let's see, the only t one I don't think we went over was that it has a lifetime warranty. Other options available, you can get it in either brown, gray, OD green, or red handles. So, price point on this baby is $59.99, as, as we said. But if you use code GGR10, you will get 10% off that, so it saves you 6 bucks. So if you need it now, head over to Cobra Tech Knives, check it out. Our rating, the pros, G10 handles, flipper works nice. The price, it's got a D2 blade and a deep pocket clip. The cons, flipper is the only way to open it, and there's a, you don't get a non-serrated option, a, a serrated option with this knife. I don't really care, but to some people it might matter. So I gave it a score of eight, which is great. Uh, I liked it. I think it's a good size. You guys got any questions on this baby? Or you're all muted and don't care? Oh, no, I, I, I think it's one of their basic um, knobs that, that, perf that will perform if you just want that basic folding style knob for the flipper. Yep. It'd be nice if it had a nail flick on it, you know, to, uh, open right? It up. Because you can't. The only other way is you have to pinch really hard to open it. And if it had just a little slot or something, it would be give you another way to open it. But yeah, and I, I've got I've got several of their knives, and I tell you, they're all smooth. They're all oh, really yeah. smooth opening, and so I I won't I won't rave how good they are, but they're good. So. Well, and that's the thing is, and you know, when he said I'll send over some knives. I was like, okay. And I was like, I wanted something that, you know, just kind of their base, base ish model flipper. Cause you know, they're kind of more known for their autos and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, I want something more everyday carry style. So, you know, it's, it's a good knife for 60 bucks. It seems a decent price. Yeah. That's the other thing. I mean, 60 bucks D2 steel, you know, yeah, it's like, if you lose it or you break it, okay, yeah, yeah, you're not losing a whole lot of money, you know. Yeah, they, I, just, I, mean, I just like how much you get out of a sixty dollar knife now. I mean, oh yeah. Before you got a sixty dollar knife, screws would be loose, uh, the blade still would be used, used tuna cans. It was like, and now it's like, yeah, I got D two, I got a flipper, 
It's on ball bearings. Exactly. It's got G2 scales. It's got a deep pocket carry. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So that is the Well, no, time. but Go he, ahead. Uh, I just want to throw this one out. Back in the day, if you got a $60 knife and you gave it to somebody or $40, $50, it would have so many crappy features it might turn them off the knives. You know what I mean? But now it's like, <laughs> they're like, huh. I may pick up a couple more of these, just like Rusty did. He's <laughs> like, hey, yeah. this is nice. Yeah, well, I think the, that one's one nice. I sent, the one I sent Tony, the mm -hmm. that's a sixty dollar uh uh out the side knife. Yeah. That I is know. one of the best openers uh that I've found in a long time for that price. And, yeah. and it's D2 and, it, and it's it's durable. And I, I still carry it every day. And I've I've bent that pocket clip in probably about 10 or 15 times, I'll just keep hammering it back in place. But uh, I mean, the knife is tough. It keeps going. It's sharp, sharp. It's razor sharp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that was the Cobra Tech Wrath. Next up is our product spotlight and discussion. I put a little few different weird things in here today. <laughs> just because. Why not? First up, this is the Blue Ops Basic Pack. And this it includes their X mag and X LSR. So MSRP on this is 299 bucks. What this is, is this is a training system right now. It's only for Glock pistols, but comes with two of their training mags, a laser. And then of course an app, which gets you the training app, various things like this. And the magazines, I put links to to both of them in here because you get the X mag and, you know, it works like a normal mag. You can insert it in the firearm. You can do dry fire practice. The mags are electronic and have sensors in them, but they also reset the trigger, which is cool. And it transmits stuff to the company app, of course, uh, in real time. But the reason they give you two in this kit is because that way you can simulate, simulate magazine changes and still have another magazine that works like it will do that. But the app will also make it so that you can put in like malfunctions. So like it won't fire. And so what do you have to do? It's got, you got to wait till you tap rack bang or depending on what it is or drop the mag, it, stuff like that. So it gives you a few other advantages in that case of course the laser cartridge that works with it you know it gives you of course an indication of where where you're shooting at uh it's basically just a laser cartridge but it has another advantage if you're using some other app like the target apps with like a camera and stuff it will tell you or like the system rob has you know it's completely different you can run this app run the training thing but then the laser shows you where you're actually shooting on the target stuff like that i th thought it was kind of cool i think the price might be a little high but it's got an advantage over some of like just like a dry fire mag where you can't drop the mag free you can't do reloads you know you look at like the mana system which i'm guessing this is does similar things to you know, or the cert, the cert pistols, you don't get the feedback. So you need an extra system, you know, so it's kind of combining all of these technologies into one. That's my thought on it. I kind of, I kind of like it, but until I actually see it, I don't know. Yeah. I want to work this thing. I want to check it out because it does give you some advantages. Uh, I've trained with a cert. I have a cert. But you get one battery slash magazine with a cert. Uh, slide doesn't move on a cert. Cert is not your gun. Cert has the stock type of uh, sights on it. This you can use with your firearm, with your sights, with your sighting mechanism, with your trigger, and it resets the trigger. Right. So it, it gives the me slide all doesn't that. move, but it resets. The oh trigger. wait, I'm I'm not bad. I thought it was just the mag. No, the slide doesn't but, move. Wait a minute, it what is, are we doing? No, we're doing No, the because game. I just watched the video. Okay. No, he, he manually racked the slide every time when he had to uh do a Oh uh, I'm 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 sorry. 
I mean, gotcha. reset the trigger. I didn't yeah. mean that. I mean, reset the trigger. Uh, I don't know why I said slide move because the slide doesn't move on the cert pistol. That's what I meant. Right. But uh, it resets the trigger also, which the Mantis doesn't reset your trigger on the handgun. Right, right. So it's bringing things in from both of those. But uh, yeah, like you said, the two ninety nine for the price, it, it's it's, cool. it is what it is. It's a new product. Maybe yeah. maybe it'll go down. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, but two ninety nine. Think about how much ammo you could save, and you won't have to go to a gun range, and you can train in the in the privacy of your own home. Right, and you right. got two mags. Yeah. You don't get two mags with the other stuff. Right, so, like right. you said, you can practice doing jams. You can practice doing mag reloads. And according to him, you can drop the mags on the concrete. And he said the mag even has a different uh, insert if you want to use it in a fifteen versus a seventeen round Glock. Yep. Which. I like this. I mean, I'm looking at this, watching the videos going, this can't be that good. Yeah. And, and then that's the thing is, is do you still have your, your system you shoot with the laser? Mm -hmm. I mean, for something like that, I think something like this in conjunction with it, because you get, you can use the app, but then you get get to shoot something something. Or something like the Mantis. I mean, then afterwards you can go back and look at how you were, squeezing the trigger and well where, I, you, where it broke and stuff i think this does that similar it analyzes it in yeah, real time I, well they so. don't really go too much into the, what their app does so right and i didn't see any inertia stuff on there because the mantis is more 3d i don't know if it's gyroscopic but it tells you how your your right, uh, right. they probably got some kind of accelerometer and it, it tells you how yeah. your pistol's moving yeah yeah and that that it does that it does and i don't know about this so well, this would be good if you have like um, laser targets or some kind of like you said that laser gun range I use. You yep. could definitely use that with it and kind of like get a good idea, or just use it alone and just try to practice like malfunctions. I mean, I think I didn't see it on the instructions, but it'd be kind of interesting if you could set it up to say, okay, give me a random number of rounds in this before I run out. Then you right. have to practice reload when it tells you to. So you might have seven, you might have five, you might have eight. You know. Yeah. And like yeah, you said, I mean, that said, sounds like something cool. Yeah. I don't know if it does it or not. I mean, I'm just saying that's what I'm, that's where my brain's going with this is, you know, what else can you do with it? And it's nice because you can set it for 10 rounds. So if you live in Jersey, you can simulate your 10 round magazine limit. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's annoying. Um, but I, I like the malfunction drill thing. Um, only because you can't even do that with dummy rounds when you're at the range if you're alone because you haven't. You know, you're going to you got to load it and you're going to feel the difference between a dummy round and real ammo or you have to load like six mags randomly and mix them up. And then but this if you can do that, I think that's cool and and practice other things with it. So hopefully this thing works out. The only thing you're not going to get from what I can see is you're not going to get the the recoil and you're not going to get the slide lock. So in the last round, you go to slide lock. Well, this you're. This does not actuate your slide, so your slide's not going to go to slide lock. Right. But, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, how much do you really want to spend on a system like this? I mean, this seems like a really good price for what you got. I mean, and truly, like, if you want something to go to slide lock, you can go ahead and get a gas blowback airsoft gun. It's going to sure. cost you about the same thing, and you're going to have to have cleanup for the airsoft pellets. I mean, there's ways to do it. I did. Um, and you get a lot of that, but... It, it's there is no perfect training tool, no. but I think we this one crosses a couple of good ones together, and hopefully it it it, it is as good or better than those two. And like three hundred bucks is what half a case of ammo. I mean, it should depends. be a case. Yeah, a case nine. nine millimeter. Yeah, or less. And price has gone down a little. So, so. That is the Blue Ops training system, I guess. They call it the basic pack, but it pretty much covers, has both their systems in it. And next up, I thought this was kind of cool for certain things. It looks a little weird. The pictures don't really show it off unless you go look at it. It's the JMAC Customs ST5 Skeletonized Tube for ultra compact M4 stocks. MSRP is 114.95 plus. Mm. This is aluminum and the reason I say plus is because this is 
it's they call it a tube, but it's not really a tube. It's a flat chunk of aluminum that you're but because of the way it's shaped and it's got notches in the bottom, your stock will fit on it. It's you know, like a buffer tube, but so you can still adjust your stock. If you put an adjustable brace on it, you can adjust your brace. You know, the thing weighs three ounces. It's not like it weighs a lot, but it's got, it's got a few, it's got integrated QD socket in it, you know, five inch length, five position adjustable, 70, 75 aluminum, hard coat anodized, but you can get it with a bunch of different options, meaning you can get it with like folders you can get it to attach to an AK you you know basically you can get it with a ton of different options and I only uh, granted I only put the one like here's one so if you want a folding AK it's 175 bucks same with like you know they make a 1913 rail folder it's like 265 bucks with this tube so you can get options they also sell the stuff separately i just thought it was something cool something different that not everybody's doing but it lets you do things that others aren't doing what do you guys got on it yeah it looks cool i just wonder how it's going to function I mean, JMAC Customs makes decent stuff. I mean, a lot yeah. of it's for AKs, but. Well, that's what I'm looking at as far as, uh, one, I can't have it even in the state of Jersey unless I have a bolt action I put it on, which it makes it even cooler. Um, but any kit is better, especially if you can uh, modernize your AK and, and up that game if you wanted to have a folding stock. Hey. A good accessories a good accessory, especially if it's quality made. Yeah, and they and what they say in this is like with the LWRC ultra compact stop, it allows it to push in all the way, you know, like a buffer tube, it stops and it won't let you put the stock in all the way. So you you got that. So that's a that's an advantage with it also. Rusty, did you have anything on it? I, mean, I think it's just, I think it's cool. Um, it's something I would probably like, I've got a 22 AR build that's bufferless and, uh, it, it, I'd, I'd like to have something like that for my, for that, uh, just make it that much more compact and cool looking. So I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Cause it, it's, it's like a lot of, a lot of places are going bufferless now. Like there's so many people that's doing bufferless AR style rifles. And I mean, yeah. it's just one more thing to trick them out with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which leads us to Rusty's got to do some work. All right, VZ Grips. <laughs> VZ Grips has been manufacturing handgun grips since 2003 with a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation. Top-tier manufacturers choose VZ Grips. They come in a variety of styles, patterns, colors, and are manufactured for from proprietary G10, my Carter, carbon fiber, or polymer. Available with a varying degree of texture, VZ offers a wide range of grips for all different farm types. Made in the USA, VZ gives you the grip you can count on. Uh, feature grip of the week is the VZ Recon G2 grip for the AR-15. And this is one of my favorite grips right here. Uh, I call it the golf ball dimple. And uh, they just have a wide variety of colors in it. And it's a good looking grip. So if you want one of these grips, go to vzgrips.com, use a discount code GGR15, get 15% off handgun and rifle grips at vzgrips.com. Hey, Rusty, I yeah. wonder, so if we put one mm. of these on a tee and hit it with a golf handle, will it fly farther than the ones that don't have the golf ball dimples? You, you know, I don't know. I mean, if they want to send me a couple to, to do that with, I will be more happy to try. I'm I'm not a golfer, so I, you know, I don't really have any good way to hit it. <laughs> I mean, I've got golf clubs, so. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, so now we have a new pistol for you to talk about. It is the Delton DT20. MSRP on this is 499 bucks. Yes, Delton has now moved into the pistol realm. 
from rifles. This is their new compact, subcompact, I don't know, micro compact, whatever you want to call it. Barrel length is three and a half, 3.3 inches. Slides width is just under an inch. So you get the idea. You know, it's 12 round capacity, 12 round, 12 plus one, nine millimeter. So it's double stack flush fit. They say it's a 16, six pound trigger pull, weighs 17 ounces without the magazine. Uh, patented trigger system. It says standard industry dovetail to allow aftermarket sites. Of course, it doesn't tell you which sites those are. Sig. Uh, what, <laughs> did, did, it does, did it in the other article. Yeah. Ships with two magazines. It is not optics cut from the looks of it. Okay, so there's one deal with it. I don't, I, I, I don't hate it. It looks like a decent gun, but it also does something different. And there, I also put the firearm blog article in here on it because it's a little different with the way they do it. The trigger bar moves up and depresses the, a button on the inside of the slide that they say acts as the sear. So what that means is that the slide is the pistol serialized frame component because it's got the sear and sear release in it. So I'm guessing they're doing that so that you can add a bunch of different frames to it if you wanted to in the future. But that also limits you on if you buy a new slide, that's now the serialized part. So you have to do it that way. That's the only difference. So it's something not like every other gun. It's got something different in it. I don't know how that'll work out, but a lot of times, a lot of people buy a subcompact, micro compact like this, and they're just like, they're not going to do much except maybe change the sights. And add an optic. So, of course, one of these is out of the question, but since it uses SIG sights, you could put a set of excess sights on it. You know, that'll help you there. Tony, you got something on it, I know. Yeah, of course I do. So, I'm sitting here checking it out, right? And they have their own proprietary magazine. I think that's a swing and a miss. Um, Not having optics cuts, I think that's a swing and a miss. I'm sorry, but it's 2024. You could have done all that. I don't know why you didn't. I don't. Uh, they said they changed this over because of the ATF ruling on what is a receiver, but they're the only ones to do it. Um, so I, I don't know what the point of that was. But okay, moving along. That's politics and 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 and, and regulations. So they have this trigger, and all the trigger does is push a button in the slide to release a striker. That's all it does. It doesn't have to cock a strike or anything. Yet they still have a seven-pound trigger. Thank you. <laughs> they said six. What? what? Either way. Uh-huh. Well, uh, uh-huh. yeah, I was I was listening to the interview, and the guy said seven in the interview. And I'm like, and it's not even from um, Andrew from uh, AR15.com. It's not even a smooth trigger, so it's a gritty. Well, he said, "There's no gritty, grit. A lot of take up, a lot of take up. So it's a. It, it's not for for as simple as you're telling me this release is. It doesn't sound like that trigger reflects the simplicity of it. And now I'm looking at the price, and I'm like, we have the Kaiser, right from Anderson, that's in this price range." Just MSRP and is actually cheaper, but the Kyger because is, they have sales. is larger. This is this is oh, it's more, larger. This is okay. How's this? Three the the Canic Mete MC nine. Uh huh. The, the all right. Better the trigger. G force optics cut. Better trigger optics cut. Um, and the ability to go. 10, 12, 15 round magazines because yeah. it'll work on the other cannons too. Cool, they came out with something unique, but just because you came out with a <laughs> with a spoon for your coffee that's made of ice doesn't <laughs> great innovation. Um, but you're missing some stuff for the to be the year. To have the expectations we have now 
aren't the same, I guess, maybe when you design this? Or maybe their unique mechanism uh, doesn't allow you to have uh, cutouts uh, for optic cut. I don't no, know. I mean, th that that could be. Yeah, but that's the, the way I was. No excuse. Oh, that's the way I was looking because it's got like a block in the back of it. The way the slide goes over, and it as it recoils, it catches and resets the striker. So I'm wondering how much of that the mechanism, the reset is up in that slide. So they're using every bit of real estate in there for the, 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 the sear release, which is actually a safety mechanism as well, because there's no dingus on there per se on the trigger and, you know, everything's up in that slide. So, I mean, they're using every bit of every ounce of material in there that they can to keep this thing together. So, mm -hmm. so but, I, I yeah, don't know. So I, I'm just looking at things that are already out that have the things we're looking for. And this doesn't. And being unique isn't enough to make me want to buy it, especially for that price. I yeah. mean, that Palmetto State Micro Dagger is probably one of the better options on the market right now, I think. so. Yeah, and that's that's like G43 compatibility, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So. We got the Micro Dagger, we got the Mete, and, and we got the Taurus. G three, G four. Which one? There's micro? there's a ton of stuff that's in that. FN FN's got the yeah. the micro out and. Well, I'm just talking about the price range of what is it? Four ninety nine. Yeah, five hundred bucks or less. Yeah, five hundred bucks. I mean, you have such a plethora. Yeah, you're right. I I shot that FN and uh, no. Um, <laughs> at least for me, it, it's a no. That's just it's so small. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Hey, good luck to him. And we're never going to poop on anybody who comes out with a new firearm, especially American made. But and, uh, and, I think and we're all first time, you know, first time goers, first time naysayers. Like, yeah, not sure how this is going to work. I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to buy the Hudson and uh, of, of Delton's and, and then it just kind of go away and not having aftermarket support or anything. So. Right, right. And and I, I hear you there. And that's, like I mentioned earlier, the G-Force Arms Rapture. At least with it, yeah, it's proprietary mags, but trigger group is a Glock trigger group. You know, it has optics cut. So there's there's some stuff in there that's this doesn't have. I mean, you know, and that's where, like you said, the micro dagger things like that now the micro daggers six rounds but you know hey you you, you got a difference there but you, you basically get... with this you get a 12 plus one nine millimeter i'm not going to call this a micro pistol because yeah, it's got to I mean, be pretty big for 12 rounds it's what well no it's sig 365 what x size uh whatever the 12 rounder is so not the 10 round okay. yeah yeah I, XL. I mean, i'm just yeah. not yeah, yeah. So interesting. I like to shoot it, but nah. That's yeah. that's the magazine size. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So palm your hand. That's a twelve rounder from Sig. And so. that's what size this is going to be, essentially. And again, it's a proprietary mag. And also, yeah. as far as the interview uh, was going with Andrew, they don't have holster sword. Right. Right. Well, I mean, you Still can go to a custom. Uh, well, not even custom. The guys that make those. Um, Vacuum vacuum holsters where they put your gun in there and they oh uh, what the heck are those the Kydex holsters yeah no yeah, but everything else we we named we can order online at, from right. hell Amazon well even even like uh, I will say something like they don't have that out but even like the Ross Martin I have it's brand new but they had three or four holster makers making it making holsters available for it when it came out. You know, it's like and yeah, okay. Rob Pink is Rob Pink is with Affinity Arms. He had he had three holster makers already yeah. out before he came out. Yeah, just hell, because... I was there. I was there when he made a deal with one of them, and this was five years before yeah. the thing came out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so they got that going. For, so that is the Delton DT twenty. I guess we'll wait a while and see how that goes. And because, of course, I wasn't done with knives. Uh, CJRB and Blade HQ 
has made an exclusive pyrite, which is this, one of their knives. It's a drop point putt and lock knife, but the basically the the special is is it's polished S ninety V steel in the blade. It's three point one inch blade. Overall length is seven point three inches. Blade thickness is point one one. Handle length is five inches. Weighs five point three ounces. Right hand, left hand. Tip up, pocket carry. You know, it's got a thumb stud also for opening besides the button lock. You know, I figured I'd throw it in here. Price on these is 90 bucks, 89.95. And I I've seen the originals of these at Shot Show, but I have never I did I was like, "Oh, I'm going to throw this in here because it has the S90 V steel. It's not the normal and for the price, you're getting a really good steel in a decent knife, if that's your type of knife. I mean, it's a it's an okay knife. It's not what I would prefer. I like the button lock, but thumb studs, you know, at least it's got two ways of opening it. You know, I got they got that going for them. So what do you guys think about this thing? I think Rusty's looking it over real good. Yeah. Uh so I was looking at the blade length compared to the handle length. I'd, I'd like to have a little bit longer blade on it. Yeah, that's kind like of what a, I was thinking. Yeah, because I mean, it's got a five inch handle and a three three and an eighth inch blade. We're right at a little less than three and an eighth inch blade. But I mean, overall, I mean, it's got it's got a that's a super steel per se. Mm -hmm. The uh, so it's a pretty good steel, but you know, I mean, for the price, I mean, it's not bad. It's Chinese made, but yet you know, a lot of companies are as barbarian. You know, uh, okay. yeah. Some, yeah. So I mean, it, it's it's not a bad it's not a bad knife, yeah. and uh, and I'm sure you can probably find it probably a little cheaper somewhere. I guess I didn't really go do any research. Well, it's a, no, it's, a, it's just... a Blade HQ exclusive. So oh, it, well, okay, it. okay. Yeah, that's right. Can't get it anywhere so, else. I mean, but it look it looks good, and it might be a little slick in your hands. You get your hands muddy or bloody or wet or something with that that. Uh, handles on there but you know what for a edc i mean it doesn't look bad i like the i like the shape of the blade i do like that hollow grind on it yeah so see what get me with this is it's heavy yeah I mean, it's it has 5.3 ounces it's because of the it's not g10 handles there yeah it's still my... still handles yeah but i'm looking at this it's like your blade hq exclusive edc it's one of those knives, I think, and, and I think it falls into this. You're not going to spend a lot of money, but it's kind of a collector type knife because it's a Blade HQ exclusive. But it's not really a collector knife as in you're going to make a bunch of money off of it. It's just an exclusive knife, I guess you call it. This is only going to be like this, but I'm like, Blade's still good. Rest of the knife, I don't care. Yeah. Um, it's an EDC. I can get a better EDC knife, in my opinion. I'm looking at the jumping. It's really smooth. It doesn't look like it's uh, aggressive enough to actually do stuff if I'm going to be using it. Using it. Uh, I'm looking at the pocket clip. It's a deep carry pocket clip, but it's all shiny and everything. Mm -hmm. This is not... <laughs> it's it's <laughs> like it's got to pick a lane. It's trying to be a pretty knife but it's saying it's a work knife, but now it's heavier than it needs to be. Yeah. I, th I, th I think it would have been a better, a far better knife if they'd put that steel in this knife, but with G 10 handles, G 10 yeah. scales, I think it would have been a better, a better option in my opinion. Uh, and, and see, I, I like a bit of a heavier knife. That's just me. Personal opinion. I mean, because mm -hmm. that was the only that's the only complaint I had about the, the black mamba. It's light. Mm -hmm. it, it it's it's a light knife. But and now I carry it almost every day. I like a heavier mm -hmm. weighted knife because I do a lot of things that I, I need a little extra weight with. And I like that extra weight. I like to know it's there. Yeah, but I mean you you carry a buck extra... one you carry a buck one ten around all the time. You I've know, carried a you buck know, one ten. 
No, I know. I don't, I, I, I don't like carrying a pound of knife in my pocket. <laughs> but the pound, the weight has to mean something. If it's just mm -hmm. in the scales, that don't mean nothing. No. Give me a thicker blade. You know what I mean? Give me, give me more jumping. Putting it in a handle. I mean, if you'd want a pretty knife, I guess this would be a pretty knife. But I'm looking at it like you're playing it off like it's EDC. But I'm not getting EDC vibes. Like it's just heavier than it needs to be with a thin blade, with not good jumping, uh, with a shiny ass clip. And I don't have a problem with the shiny clip, but I don't do the shiny for the EDC, even though I mean nothing's wrong with it, because I have enough of these silk heck right here. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's got a silver, but it's satin. Yeah, yeah, it's not. I don't know. I don't know. It, it just seems to be the veering out of a couple of lanes, and it needed, I think what you said, it needed maybe G10 scales for this. Yeah. Um, That would make sense, because, again, unless I'm getting the weight in the blade or in the mechanism, uh, the, the locking mechanism, what the hell is the point of heavy handles? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't buy a knife for a collectors unless I just, I mean, I, I buy a knife to work with. I mean, I'm using that thing. If I can't, if I got to buy a knife to put up in a, in a case, I don't need it because everyone I got is going to get, I mean, I, I, I broke a Cobra tech the other day, uh, in one of their, their fixed plates and it was totally my fault. What I did was use it for something out of its lane. Well, what it was. <laughs> You're not supposed to pry on it and hit it with I a was, hammer at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> hey, I got the window open. I broke into a house with it, so it was perfectly fine. It did what it's supposed to do. And, um, Still got you, baby. I broke into a prison with one. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Well, that's the first. There, Who's ever broke there, into a prison with a knife? Who's ever broke into tools. a prison? <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think I – think, if that's your speed of that knife right there, I like the blade on it. I like the blade still. I like the blade profile. The handles, eh, they're not my thing. I, I think they're a little slick because I, I fish a lot. I hunt a lot. That thing's going to slide out of my hand. I don't have good hand strength anymore. I've had hand surgery on both hands. And so I want something that's grippy and to hang on to. And uh, I just don't think that's, you know, the grip for my style. I hear yep. you. I hear you. Yeah, so blade shape is good, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and steel. So that is the CJRB Pyrite Blade HQ exclusive. Now, Walker Defense provides you, the shooter, with the finest, most innovative quality tactical accessories and firearm components around. From their Nile grip panels to Nero muzzle brakes, no details are ever left behind. Only top quality materials are used in the manufacturing process. Together, all of this gives you some of the best fire and performance around. Everything they have to offer is proudly made in the USA. Walker Defense, where American ingenuity meets bleeding edge technology. Our Walker Defense product of the week this week is their Nero 9. So if you have a 9mm carbine or something to that effect and want a fantastic muzzle brake, check it out. You can use code INSIDER15 over there and get 15% off everything they offer at walkerdr.com. And we have some listener feedback. Figured I'd just, you know, put it in the show notes instead of just answering it because we get all kinds of answers this way. This is from David P. It says, hello, gentlemen. Over 500 shows and I never heard one I didn't like. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, I saw a new we'll shooting keep toy. Trying. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep trying. <laughs> we'll disappoint you one of these days. Exactly. I saw a new shooting toy and would like to see a review on it. It is the Pull Pup Clay Thrower. So I checked it out. I'm contacting them uh, to check it out. It's like a little, it's a mechanical clay thrower, but it's got like a pistol grip and like a forearm on it. So it kind of safety feature. So you won't like smack yourself yeah. with it. If you've ever <laughs> used one of the hand throwers, you know, you can whack yourself in the face with that thing. And, and so I'm like, this thing looks pretty cool. So I'm trying to see if they'll send, send one for, for full review. They're like 70 bucks. So who knows? I may just end up buying one to just tell them what we think about it. So, and on a side note, says he also wants to get an entry level AR. He wa wants to know our views on the Delton and Radical Firearms brands. Notice I put the Radical Firearms one in the primary arms thing. 
And of course we talked about a Delton product, but it wasn't the rifles. So it says, keep up the great shows because this is the golden age of firearms. Now I'm going to, that guy sounds wise. I know <laughs> it is the golden age of firearms. But what I'm going to say is, is I have not used a radical firearms or shot one of their rifles. I do know primary arms has steel of deals on them for 400 bucks once in a while on special, like one day only things. And they sell out fast. I have used a Delton. I have used Delton parts. I had a couple Delton lowers. I've, you know, used plenty of their parts. I don't have a problem with the Delton ones. I think they're it's probably, they're a little more expensive than a few of the others. Not by a ton. I, so in my opinion, I would, the Delton would be the one I would choose just because I've used it. Uh, oh. now, of course, radical firearms, you know, I think they're, better than bear creek <laughs> so i just actually uh somebody here has one so i just tactically found a radical shoot last week um and i uh, have a bear creek upper i didn't have a bear creek lower i have that sense of the house and radical delton i haven't i mean other than doing it in in, in a store i haven't handled it but what are we talking? You just want these brands? Or you want in that price range? Because if we're talking that price range, we're talking PSA too. Mm. And I, I think they're good. I think maybe you'll run into some QC problems, maybe compared to other stuff. But I haven't had a problem with, and I have multiple PSAs. I haven't had a problem with them. Uh, I ran them in classes. I've had diversity shoots run them through a pretty high round count. And haven't had anything break on them, and and if we're just talking that price range again, I think the things that you might get that's kind of weird if if it's not coming apart, if it doesn't do anything weird, is like uh, maybe a bulk carrier group isn't that great, but you can replace one of those and catch a good one, a good one on sale if you're worrying about something like that. But I think a lot of these entry priced ARs are decent, but understand what you're buying, that you may run into a problem that you'll have to solve. Like, it, you get what you kind of pay for? No, you get what you pay but for. I don't... What was that? I said you get what you pay for. Now, I think, I, I think it's not as bad as people say, because they try to act as if somehow if I buy a Daniel Defense, I'm getting the epitome of, of weapons built on Asgard, yeah. and that's not true. And if you don't spend fifteen hundred dollars, you're gonna get killed in the street. Like the gun is gonna explode in your face and take your firstborn with you. And I, I think that's kind of bullcrap too. I think you may have things that aren't state. I think you have to maybe look at the gas key. You're gonna to have to look it over to make sure stuff is done right. But you know you came in at this price point, so you're gonna to have to do that extra due diligence as a customer. Yeah, and, I've, I've got a, I've got a Delton that, and honestly, the only AR I've ever bought complete is a Delton, a Delton, and um, and I'm running this uh, this next week in a class, and I've run it in four or five classes throughout the years. I've owned it for quite some time. All my other ARs have been piece, you know, piece spin stuff or eighty percent stuff, but I can the one I have is is fantastic it, for the price i paid for it i couldn't i don't know high 400s maybe and um yeah and it runs like a champ and uh, it goes i've changed out parts on it i've put different triggers in it i changed the foregrip out on it you know and, 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 it, and it it runs and i think that for the price you can't go wrong but there's a lot of other manufacturers out there that are selling guns in that that same price range that just do your research on find what you want, what you want to put into it and what you plan on doing with it. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. I was, I was going to say the other day and I'll say this now next week, hopefully we're going to have Paul from Foxtrot Mike on maybe a couple of the other guys. I, I don't know for sure, 
Uh, so I was looking around their page, you know, just to, we'll have him on to discuss his products and we all like him. So, <laughs> you know, he sent us stuff that were, our reviews aren't done, but they have their gen one Mike 15 AR 16 inch. It's essentially just your right now. They're like 510 bucks, you know, and I do know you get a few advantages like that's 15 inch M lock handguard. They're running 4150 barrel steel, which some of the others might be 4140. But like Tony said, or Rusty, I don't remember who, look around. You can find good deals on good stuff, you know. And some areas, other some products might be less expensive than others just because of location. Uh, you know, sometimes that makes a difference too. Uh, if your dealer stocks it, you know, there's always that kind of stuff too. Rob, you got anything on it or do you mean, fall asleep? I, no, 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 I'm, I'm here. I, I, I know many years ago I bought a, a lower end AR 15 and I just wasn't happy with it and I wound up selling it. And I kind of came to the conclusion that if I'm going to buy an AR, I'm just going to, you know, I hate to say buy once, cry once, but find a good AR that I want and it'll last me a while and then be done with it. But nowadays, I mean, you've got people making solid ARs for the five to $700 price point. When back when I bought it, if you if you didn't buy a fifteen hundred dollar AR, you were pretty much buying garbage because every swing in Yahoo and your brother was making ARs, and God only knows what parts they were using in them. You know. Yeah. I, I do. I mean, I've built ARs and I and I've bought them um, for entry AR. I would definitely buy it because you want to make sure it's going to fit together, everything's going to work. You don't have to worry about getting the wrong part and then having to machine stuff together to to get it to fit because one manufacturer makes it this way, another manufacturer does something different. I mean, what Rusty said about his Delton, I don't have experience with either one of these two, but, you know, Rusty say, seems to sound like Deltons are a decent firearm. So, I mean, I'd, I'd probably lean toward the Delton at this point. Or, yeah. listen, next week, when we get the Foxtrot Mike guys on, I, I uh, we went to their booth and kind of gang rushed them at the shot show, all four of us. And they got some pretty cool stuff, and they got some neat stuff coming down the pipeline. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, their stuff yeah, seems to be pretty quality. I'm, I'm waiting for the X39. Yeah, yeah, the 102 or whatever it is. The Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. they so, call it. <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned, if you're buying your first AR, yeah, buy one already together regardless. If you pay, if you come in at entry level, if you come in at top end and run it and learn about the gun. And then when you figure out what you expect or what you like or what you actually think you can improve because you got time on it, then do it that way. Um because I have guys down here ask me about AR stuff and then they buy some gun show AR that some dude built and they drop like, Oh, I paid $1,200 for it. And I'm like, bro, this thing doesn't have one brand name on it at all. And you have like a crazy stainless fluted 22 inch barrel. <laughs> oh yeah. What is this? And I don't want to say anything, but I'm looking at the monstrosity. Like, you pay twelve hundred dollars for this, bro. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. I don't even know like whose triggers in here, who's this is in here, what bolt carrier group did they use? Well, just like you said, this is a golden age of firearms. Tony's been saying that for years since before I was on the show, and <laughs> things change. Things change a lot. I have changed optics on my rifle six times because something new has come out, and I've changed. I went from from scope to red dot to prism back to red dot back to a scope you know uh, lpvo and, and, and things change I've, I've had three different trigger systems in there and, and and i'm playing with slings i was just showing it right before the show that's that was a delta i had that i was showing y'all and i was right before the show i was like showing you like I, i'm fixing to change hand guards out on it i think this is the third hand guard I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go this week probably and try to find me a a full length handguard to go all the way across the end of the barrel because I'm trying to straight uh, lengthen the sling out a little bit more and more hand space so I can get you know more out there to grip on because yeah. that's a big thing. Look at look at your handguard. Look at how long it is. You know, yeah. um, look at the stock that that is on there. Is does it have the stock? I got a beard. Some stocks I know the stocks are cheap. You know, well it depends on how cheap you want to get. Forty fifty bucks. I've got some that grab my beard, and when I pull it back away from my face, it rips the hair out. 
you no, know and, and, some of the magpuls and, do and a2 doesn't do that yeah a2 doesn't do that <laughs> well you know hey look i live in the state i live in a state where if i have an adjustable stock it has to be pinned so me a2 is fine or even an a1 oh, length man. big stock because that's pretty much the length most people let their stuff out anyway so so I'm like, give me a fixed stock. That's one less thing I have to do. I don't have to freaking uh, uh, stake a castle nut. Like, it, some things are simple. And when you purchase and come in at entry level stuff, you're probably going to swap stuff in and out. Learn it, though. Run a class with it. Figure it out. More than just you at the range pulling the trigger and, and shooting the zombies, go into class, make you run it, make you run it on the offhand make you shoot in uncomfortable and weird positions. That way you get a workout around the gun. You figure out, man, I couldn't reach that. And you get to talk to the other guys and girls in class and see what they use. I find nothing wrong with the entry level. Let, let's quit lying to each other, though, and go, well, instead of buying a $2,000 gun, I'll buy a $500 gun and ammo in a class. Most people don't do that. Most most people don't set their budget up like that. But if you are going to get that, get yourself a say or, or site from one of these companies like the STD or other things. Set yourself up with good entry level price options and run the damn thing. And then if it goes down or you want better glass or you want longer battery life or you want to clear whatever, at least you have something to base it on. Instead of watching YouTube videos from dudes to get paid to freaking advertise stuff, because that just well, ticks me off. Yeah, I, I tell you, you, were, you gave me an idea, Tony. Uh, one of the, local, the uh, one of the local gun ranges, Okeechobee Shooting Sports, which is a drive for me, but it's you know, they actually rent firearms, so you can go down go down there and like for twenty bucks for the whole day, rent their firearms, you know, and you can try different rifles and try what you like. And if you take a class there, you can actually rent their firearm. So you can try the firearm and see if you actually like it. You know, it's like cheaper to spend 50 bucks, you know, 25, 50 bucks a day on a rental than it is, you know, 500 to 15 to $2,000 on a gun that you're going to buy. Yeah. Now, I've heard this too. And, and Rob, you're right. Buy one, cry once. Buy once, cry once. But the other thing is, if you spend $2,000 or $1,700 on an AR that has features that you'll never use, that you've, you've just bought this BCM, you just purchased this Daniel, you just purchased this thing that's on this level, mm -hmm. but you don't need, you're not jumping out of planes. But you mean you're I don't need my forward rolling. assist? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying. I'm not cramming yeah. something into a hole that doesn't want to go in there. I mean, I'm just telling you. All right. You, well, not, thank you very it. much for this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, no, it, 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 I look at the forward assist as a worsener button. <laughs> it's like, worser. My problem, worser, worser. I just made it worser. <laughs> nice. But, yeah. So hopefully we answered your question, David. Uh, and thank you so much for listening and putting yeah, up with guess us. Yes, we, we just found a show you didn't like. Thank uh, you. We can help out with 519. That's right. That's right. So we'll buy a high point now. Hey, if it's a carbine, <laughs> we can't say bad things about it. No, no, I can't. Nope. I can't say anything bad about the high point. Yeah, that yeah. thing will run. Okay. Tony, so tell us about high points and where you can shoot them. You want to shoot a high point carbine, 9mm, 995? I got one. And it's in the high tower armory, full pump chassis. And you can shoot it on April 11th at Gun for Higher Range, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. You can purchase your tickets by following the link on diversityshoot.com. Or you can go to Simon Says Train on Instagram and check out my latest reel, which is awesome, with Dusty Rose doing the voiceover. Anyway, um... Come to our diversity shoots where we introduce people to firearms, uh, different firearms. So it's not just for newbies. We have cool stuff there that you can shoot you haven't seen before, or you can try different firearms out. We have them. I mean, have you checked out Rock Island's version of the Glock 19? It's got an aluminum frame. We got one. You ever check out the, uh, what is it, M9A3? Got one. 1911s? We got a few. 10 millimeter rock? Got one. 
So we have different things that you can try out of diversity shoots. If, even if you own firearms already and want to check out something new, we also introduce your mom to guns for the first time. We'll have your grandmom shooting an AK. We do that kind of things. We introduce the firearms. We're introducing the Second Amendment groups. We have really cool pizza and we have cool prizes. A lot of stuff with Shot Show swag is going to be at the diversity shoots, along with uh, cleaning products from Aegeus Gun Care and things like that. So come to Diversity Shoot. Visit diversityshoot.com. If you want to help us out, go to diversityshoot.com. You can donate at our PayPal. You can also join our Patreon. We're going to have that. I'm going to talk to a couple of companies and I want to set it up so we have really cool patron prizes that you guys can win at different levels. So that's what we're trying to do with Diversity Shoot. Well on the way, we have most of the year done. I have four more openings for uh, a new range. Hopefully we can get one new range. I, I don't want to pop into two new ranges in one year, but we'll see. So diversityshoot.com, come on out. Let's have some fun. April 11th. Tickets are 20 bucks. Yeah. So if you're local, go have some free pizza or $20 pizza. I don't know. <laughs> so you can send us questions, comments, or feedback to gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review somewhere. We appreciate it. Now, of course, David sent us a one through the email, but hey, that works too. Uh, don't forget to visit the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv where you can sign up to win a red dot. Uh, I figure we'll give it away when I do the review. So month and a half, maybe, I don't know. You got some time. So go over there, sign up. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook, X, and Instagram at Firearms Insider. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch the live shows or the old shows or some shorts that I put up of me shooting and YouTube doesn't like them. So I get like 500 views and then the next one I get like 10,000 views on. I, okay. I don't know. <laughs> You're getting that too, right? <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I dude, I have is. no idea what works on a reel at all. Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't matter, but. But I'll hold up a handgun. And I'll go. This is the so and so. Five thousand five hundred views. Uh huh. Next one. This is the so and so. Same thing. Two hundred. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Don't don't forget to check out our great sponsors. And as always, thank you for listening to the largest pound for pound podcast on the network. And we are out. Epstein didn't kill himself. He did. He made though.